So Malakia mm-hmm. uh, put out the the call for topics for this month, and you said something about placemaking, mm-hmm. and everybody said, "Okay, good enough for me." I don't know what placemaking <laughs> is, but let's let's go with that. So tell us about I don't know something about placemaking. If you yeah, can't come yeah, up with something, sure. I'll ask a question. When I said it, I was thinking that was the last thing I had been thinking about. I mean, yeah, recently. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, that was the last thing I had been thinking about. That was kind of like me trying to connect myself back to myself since being a new mom. Um, but yeah, placemaking is turning a space into a place, you know, imbuing a space with imagination, possibility, you know, etherealness, making, trying to combat the escapism, at least for me of like wanting to leave the country all the time and deciding to put that energy into the neighborhood that I live in (laughs) and maybe make the corner a scenic view rather than scrolling on Instagram trying to wish I was at other scenic views Um, (laughs) or making, yeah, like, it could be a scenic view, but it also could be like a functional place of gathering. Like I remember one of the examples me and Ebony found, which were, which was one of my favorites, was the Giving Tree, which was like creating this sort of installation where people could put their business cards on a tree, and then if you needed it and you walked by, you could like take the card or put the card. Well, there were cards like by that you could say, "Hey, I do photography," and then put it on the tree. And if someone walked by and needed photography, they could take the card. You know, similar to those take take one, leave one sort of things. Um, but yeah, like doing that in a, in a, how do I say? Not governed by an institution. <laughs> um, yeah, so that is what I was thinking about when I said placemaking. I was trying to get back into those things, get back into how we, yeah, how I could be a part of those things, especially as a single mom now. I feel like my favorite thing about it is that being it being such a low barrier to entry. Like I, I did a placemaking project in 2020 um, called the Sidewalk Project, where I put what if questions on the sidewalk all around the city of DC and it was very low barrier to entry and when it rained it washed away and I didn't even need a permit for it or <laughs> but I could like put these ideas out into the world that people could like walk by and it didn't matter what status you were you could like engage with it and experience it and like maybe take the question back to your homies and like I don't know think about it I'm rambling now I hope that what I've said has conjured. Are there are there some other um, examples? You've given us kind of two there: the wishing tree and your little yeah. what if. Um, what else, What other kind of things? Um, there's a really cool project that I follow online. That well, this is, it's kind of similar, but um, I forget their name. I would I would love to credit them, but I forget what their names are. And but they um, write they ask people that are walking around to write their fears on the sidewalk and they have like a push brush and some water and so people write it and then they like wash it away yeah actively Mm -hmm. just kind of cool making turning i mean there's also the typical ones that cities do you know like the black lives matter street in dc like creating common areas those sort of things that turn spaces into places but I'm more so interested in the ones that are a bit more grassroots, I guess, and a bit more, what are the words I want? I don't know, like I said, imagine and possi- imagination, possibility, etherealness, these things. Combined with functionality where possible, but mostly imagination and possibility 
getting it's people to ask what if about their the places that they live in. Does that make trying sense? To, yeah, well, I'm trying to, yeah, you know, beautifying your, your neighborhood, making your the place where you live just have a better vibe to it. You know? <laughs> right i mean in general i guess yeah what it seems like kind of stuff i mean i wonder i don't know like where i live i don't um place making activities i don't know i just got back from a friends of the library meeting where we were planning our our winter um winter tea and and silent auction Uh and we do these events at the library pretty like I don't know, four times a year probably and it's mm-hmm. our last one um was a big fry bread feed that we do we're on the uh, confederated salish kootenai tri- uh, tribal reservation mm-hmm. here so um the indian indian tacos uh is are a big thing and so we had some uh, folks from the tribal nutrition center uh make indian tacos for us and you know sold out of course um and and it's just a great event for everybody you know to come down you know Mm -hmm. anything we do at the library i don't know if that's too formal to count is the kind of thing that you're no i love libraries i feel like the the most formal i'll get is libraries i love i think they're the one thing that we got right Mm -hmm. crazy society (laughs) libraries are so great so no i don't think that's that's too formal they're often i feel like the places that But I would, I mean, yeah, the places, like, it's like the last commons we have. It's like the last place you can go to and don't have to have money to be there. Other than, a, yeah, parks and libraries. But that's the last place yeah. you can go to inside. Or you could hopefully just make a sandwich, don't nobody come bother you. And you're just smart with business, minding your business. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do I want to say? I wanted to say also... You know, last time when I was thinking about these things, they were more of like an intellectual curiosity. They were like, um, yeah, like an an exercise, an intellectual exercise. But now having a family, this idea of community and strengthening those bonds. And also just like having, ways to bring joy into life outside of like the many logistical things we have to think about every day it's been it's had a new like tint to it for me because yeah because of what i just talked about it's it's just not it's not an intellectual curiosity anymore it's like a very much feeling the need for it real thing yeah (laughs) So like for it to be both functional, the need for both functionality and yeah, beauty outside of just all this mundaneness that I have to like trudge through every day.